Hi, Jim Stanley with SKF, bringing you another SKF Tech Tip. In this video, I'm going to show you how to use the TKSA-71 laser shaft alignment system from SKF. Okay, before we start the alignment, let's talk about some of the capabilities of the TKSA-71 laser shaft alignment system, right? The TKSA-71 uses six apps that are tailored to different alignment jobs, right? So the first app is the SKF shaft alignment app, and that's for horizontal shaft alignments. The second app we have is the sawfoot app, and that's to check for machinery sawfoot before you start an alignment. The third app we have is the vertical shaft alignment app. Right, and that is to align vertical shaft machines. The fourth app we have is the spacer shaft alignment app, which accommodates the special requirements of the spacer shaft configuration. The fifth app we have is machine train app, and that is to align three connected machines. And the sixth app we have is the values app, and that allows the alignment tool to be used as digital dial gauges. The apps are available in the Apple App Store and the Google Play Store, so iOS or Android operating systems, right, phones or tablets. Uh, I'm going to show you when I do the alignment on my Apple iPad. So the bigger the tablet, the easier it is to see, of course, right? Now these laser units are ultra-compact wireless measuring units, right, uh, for use in extremely narrow spaces. When you look at all three of our wireless measuring units, right, this is from the TKSA 41, this is from the TKSA 51, and this, of course, is the TKSA 71, right, significantly smaller than the other two wireless designs we have, also thinner. This unit can get into very small spaces. Also, measuring distance. This offers our farthest distance between measuring units, right? Uh, the TKSA-71 gets up to 32.8 feet or 10 meters apart. Up to eight hours operating time on a full charge. Also, they have a 10 minute quick charge, right? You can charge these units on the charging pads for 10 minutes and get one hour's worth of use out of a 10 minute quick charge. So that's another feature that is uh, unique to the TKSA-71. The TKSA-71 allows for a traditional 180 degree, three position, you know, 9, 12, and 3 uh, alignment, and it can also be started in any position. You also, with the TKSA-71, it allows for automatic measurements. So when you get to those fixed positions, if you're doing a traditional 180 degree measurement, right, 9, 12, 3, when you get to that position and stop moving the measuring units, it will count down 3, 2, 1, and it will take the reading, and then you move the laser units to the next position. So I'll show you that in the alignment video. Uh, it also allows you to do free measurements with a minimum of 40 degree rotation. So three different readings in as small as a, as a 40 degree movement versus a 180 degree movement in a traditional alignment. The TKSA-71 also offers an extended filter length for disturbance compensation. So what that allows you to do to extend that filter length, right? So you can take that filter length uh, from two seconds all the way out to 20 seconds. So it allows you, if you've got high vibration or high winds, you know, external disturbances, you can extend that measurement time out to 20 seconds to make sure that you get an accurate and precise measurement. Also, the TKSA-71 using the tablet, right, you have 3D free view of the machinery. So you can rotate and flip uh, the machinery on the screen. I'll show you that when we do the alignment as well. Now, the TKSA-71 versus the TKSA-71 Pro, right, this is everything that comes with the TKSA-71. Get rid of these measuring heads here, right? This is everything that comes with the TKSA-71. But the TKSA-71 Pro, you get all of this, and it gives you three additional mounting options, right? Instead of just a standard bracket and mounting chain, you get, with the TKSA-71 Pro, you get two magnetic bases, you get two sliding brackets, and two offset brackets, three additional ways to mount these measuring units to the shaft. You also get four additional extension rods with the TKSA-71 Pro, and also a much larger case, right? With all those additional accessories, you get a much larger wheeled case, which is also IP67 rated. 
So now let me take everything out of the box and I'll show you what comes with the TKSA-71. Okay, so let's quickly go over what comes in the case of the TKSA-71 alignment tool. Right, you get a very rugged, durable uh, case that is IP67 rated with a heavy, dense foam insert. Uh, also, the laser heads are also IP67. So the heads and the, and the carrying case are both IP67 rated. Uh, you've got a heavy, dense foam insert in here and everything, all the components here on the table have their specific place in this case. So going around the items here, of course you get a tape measure, you get your stationary and movable measuring units, you get two charging pads, their micro USB connection on this end to a USB connection on this end. Now this is the fastest charging mode, right? If you plug these into a computer, um, laptop, what have you, they are going to charge much slower than they will in this configuration right here. So you've got that. I'll show you how those work here in a moment. Uh, we've got our mounting brackets with standard chains. This standard chain will get you around a shaft just under six inch diameter, right? So the standard chain that comes on the mounting bracket just under a six inch shaft. If you've got a larger shaft than that, that brings us over here to the right side of your screen. Extension chains. These two extension chains connect to these chains and that'll get you to uh, just under an 18 inch shaft. That's a large diameter shaft so you can do quite a few alignment jobs with this. Also four extension rods while we're up here. Four extension rods so if you need to add to the standard rod, you can add these extension rods to this to get up over a taller coupling. Uh, also magnets. If you can't use the chain, you can actually take the magnet and mount it, mount the magnet here in four different positions on the side face of the bracket and mount that directly to the side face of the coupling. So there's eight magnets in total, four for each bracket. Inside this plastic case are the little machine screws, Allen head machine screws that attach those magnets to the bracket. Also in here are the two connectors you need to, ex to uh, add the extension chains to the standard chains. So that's what's in this case as well. Now charging this unit, I'm not sure if you can see this or not, but there currently are two red LED lights on these charging pads, right? So all we do is lay our measuring units onto the charging pad. Let me put this to where you can see it, like so, right? Red light indicates that it's charging. When that red light goes out, it's fully charged, but you need to make sure that that red light was on in the first place, right? So if I move this back slightly, well, let me try this, there we go. Slightly off the side, there is no red light, right? So it's not charging. Now you'll notice that the pad, let me move this back over so this is charging. So that red light's charging, right? Let me put this unit on here and get that charging. The LED on the pads, I don't know if you can see that on the camera. Let me actually zoom that in real quick. The LEDs on the pads have now turned blue. When there is no laser head on them, they're red. When you put the laser head on there and everything's charging, everything's fine, that blue light will let you know that everything's charging properly. So again, let those charge until the red light goes off and then that will give you eight hours of operation, right, with fully charged measuring units. Let me go ahead and get set up and we'll do an alignment with the TKSA-71. Okay, so I've already went ahead and mounted the mounting bracket to the movable side of this demo rig, right? The black pillar represents, let's say, a pump, for example, and this silver pillar represents a motor. So we are coupling a motor to a pump, and that's what this demo rig represents. So I've already mounted one of the mounting brackets and have it tensioned in place. I just wanted to show you a couple things on the mounting brackets uh, real quick. Uh, the rods come from the factory already on the mounting bracket. Standard rod is 80 millimeters long or 3.2 inches. The extension rods that come with the kit, uh, that's the extension rod, right? The extension rods are 120 millimeters long, 4.7 inches, right? So you could swap these standard rods out for the set of four longer rods, uh, but our coupling is so short we don't need to add that height to get up over this coupling. This is how it comes from the factory. Here's our chain our chain bolt and our chain tensioning knob on this side. On this side is a pin, and that's what the chain actually goes over top of to be tensioned, right? So we put the chain for larger shaft diameters, that's how we hook the chain, right? So if we were dealing with uh, uh, just under six inch shaft is what this chain can max out at, we would just drop the chain down over top of that pin just like that, 
and then you could throw the slack back over it like that for the larger shafts. Now this shaft is under an inch and a half, so under two inch shafts, we actually take the chain and we slide it through this slot right here. And we slide it right down through the slot just like that, right? So it's hanging in there like this, and then you pull it and adjust it and drop it over top of that pin. So that's how we adjust it, right? Just move it back and forth by hand and drop it over top of that pin. Also, if you were going to use the magnets on the side face of this bracket, right, we would want to remove this chain. All we have to do is untighten this tensioning knob, take it completely off of the chain, chain bolt, just like that, right? It'll drop out of this barrel right here. Now we can attach our four magnets with the machine screws supplied to the side face of this bracket and then mount that right to the side face of the coupling. But we're not going to use that today. We are going to use the chain. So we're going to take the barrel, we're going to take the chain bolt, just like this, slide it through the barrel, like so, hold it in place, small end of the tensioning knob onto that, and then spin it down a couple threads, right? Three or four threads, all you really need to spin it down. You don't want to spin it down like this, right? You don't want a lot of that uh, chain bolt sticking up out of there because it's not going to give us a lot of tension or a lot of adjustment, right, when, the, when we're trying to adjust and tension this chain. So we want to back that back down uh, just to get three or four threads like so on that tensioning knob. Uh, that way we've got maximum adjustment when we go ahead and mount this. So let me show you how I do this. Right, bring this bracket, kind of flip it upside down. Again, straighten the chain out and drop it down through that slot, just like so. Drop it over there, flip it up here to the top, right? And then I grab my chain again, grab my chain and drop it over top of there like that, right? So now I'm gonna hold the bracket and use my tensioning knob back here to go ahead and start to snug that up. Now, as we're doing this, we want to make sure that we are semi-aligned, right? That these brackets are semi-aligned and that these mounting rods, standard rods here, are semi-aligned. So you do that from the top down. So I'm going to come up here like so and look down here, top down on this thing, just to get it close. And I'm going to go ahead and torque those into place. Now, we are going to adjust this once we mount the uh, measuring units to these rods and turn on the app and turn on the lasers, I'll show you how to further adjust this and refine the adjustment to make sure that we are right where we need to be. So this is the movable laser, right? This is the movable side, M side. Movable, right? Movable, movable side. You'll notice that there's two holes in the body of this uh, measuring unit, right? They slide over top of these two bars. I slide it down and lightly adjust the tension on these two tensioning knobs to just hold it in place, right? Here's our stationary, same exact thing, two holes, slide it down over the body, and again, right now, before we turn these on, right, we just want to get them close uh, to where they're aligned from one side to the other. We will make our final adjustments once we launch the app on the tablet. So we'll leave this as they are right now. All right, so let's go over the apps real quick that are available for the TKSA-71. Top left corner here is the SKF shaft alignment app. That's for horizontal shaft alignments. Next one over is the SKF Softfoot app. Both of these apps are what we're going to use on this video, right? Uh, the next uh, app over is the Spacer Shaft app. The next one is the Machine Train app, Vertical Shaft app, and then Values app, right? These are the six apps available for the TKSA-71 laser shaft alignment system. So we're going to use shaft alignment and Softfoot, right? So we're going to go ahead and first, right, we could launch the shaft alignment app, but we want to first check Softfoot, right, before we even get into the process of doing an alignment, we want to go ahead and check Softfoot. So I'm going to go ahead and launch the Softfoot app. Here are some of the other reports that I've created uh, for Softfoot. Um, same exact settings uh, as the alignment app, right, new measurements, settings, machine library, and help. So we'll quickly look at settings. It's very much the same as the alignment app. Company is SKF, you can click on that and type in your own company. Same thing with operator, right? I can click on that and type in the operator name. Coming down here to the photo, right? If you click in this area like that, right? You can choose a photo from your library or you can take a photo with the device, right? So I did take this photo of the SKF logo and I attached it to my report. So that's on my report. 
So you can either choose a photo from your library or take a photo. Uh, come down sensor values, just like the alignment app, right? Sensor values always display. So in other words, the sensors, the uh, measurement units, their angularity, uh, and their degrees of displacement are always going to be displayed on the screen. You can also extend the filter length for the SoftFoot app. If you've got excessive vibration, high winds, what have you, you can, ex you can turn on extended filter length and you can extend that laser readings between 2 and 20 seconds. I'm not going to do that. I don't have any excessive vibration or anything like that. Uh, you can clearly see I've already had these laser heads connected. If I had just, you know, if I had just downloaded this app and just turned these laser units on, this is where I would go to find them, right? I would select hardware and it will show you via Bluetooth. I don't have the units turned on right now, so it's not picking them up. So I'm going to say done. Let's try cancel. There we go. Um, units are imperial. You can also switch that to metric. Uh, and I'm going to come and I want my readings to be in thousands versus mils. So I'm going to leave that in thousands and I'm going to say done. So then I'm going to come up here to new measurement and it's telling me it can't find the units, right? So I'm going to go ahead and turn these units on. So I'm going to come over here and press this. There's that green power light. Hopefully you can tell what color that is. Turn that one on, green power light. So I'm going to come over here and press this. There's that green power light. Hopefully you can tell what color that is. Turn that one on, green power light. Uh, as soon as that app picks those up, right, here's my units back here on the tablet. I'm going to say, yes, those are, the, those are the laser units I want to connect to. Say done. Uh, as soon as that app picks those up, right, here's my units back here on the tablet. I'm going to say, yes, those are, the, those are the laser units I want to connect to. Say done. And then the blue light should come on. There we go. The blue light came on on both of the laser units. So I'm going to come back here and put in... Uh, machinery ID, the name of the machine. I'm going to call it Demo Rig and then today's date, the 11th. I don't have a QR code, but if I did have a QR code, I could scan that and load more information. Okay, so now we're going to put our dimensions in. The first dimension we're going to put in is from the non-movable, the center of the non-movable laser unit to the center of the coupling. So I'm going to go ahead and touch that come over here and measure that distance. That is 2.75. So 2.75 and hit go or next. Now it's taken us to the next dimension which is the center of the coupling to the center of our bracket for our movable side. So this dimension here, let me see what that dimension is. That's also 2.75. Hit next. Now it's taken us to this dimension here, the center of our bracket to the center of our front foot. I'll use the chain over here as a guide. Around here. That is also 2.75. Hit next. And now it's taken us to our feet spacing, right? The center to center on our feet spacing here, I know is three and a quarter, so I'll leave that uh, as it is at three and a quarter and hit go. Okay, just to clarify what I was measuring, right? We're talking about the center of this bracket to the center of this coupling for the first dimension. The second dimension is the center of this coupling to again, the center of this bracket, right? The third dimension is the center of this bracket to the center of this foot, right? You can use this chain as, as the uh, chain drops down here. You can use the center of that chain to the center of this foot. That's a good estimate on how to get that dimension, right? So again, the center of this bracket to the center of the coupling. Then the second reading is the center of the coupling to the center of this bracket. The third reading is the center of this bracket to the center of the front foot of the motor. And then, of course, the fourth dimension is the center to center on your motor um, bolt hole spacing. To take a photo, you can say add a photo. I'll quickly do this. You could choose a photo again from your library if you already have a photo of, your, of this piece of equipment, or you can take a photo. So I'm going to go ahead and say take a photo and bring this up here and take the photo. All right, so put it back down here so you can see what I've done, right? So here's the photo. 
Uh, well, not a, not a great photo, but it is a photo. And down here on the bottom right, you can see, well, let me move this back a hair. Down here on the bottom right, you can see use photo or retake. I'm gonna say, go ahead and use that photo. And now we're back here on the report. Uh, let's scroll down. There's nothing else here that we need to add. So now when I say done, if we look, watch the screen here, you're gonna see, right? And now here it is. That's what we need to do, sensor status. So we need to adjust our lasers, right? So clearly, when we look at our lasers, we're not far off target side to side, but we are off angular, right? So we are off from uh, one laser to the other. So let me go ahead and move my stationary target up to be more in line with the movable machine, right? So I've, I've loosened my sensors up here, so I'm gonna move this around until I get that line just like that on the right-hand side. Right, so we're looking at this spot over here. As I move this up and down with the camera, or on this other camera, you can see me move this unit up or down. This is what's happening to our laser that's being broadcast over to this movable machine. So let me get that adjusted like that. And go ahead and snug this up. You don't want to break that laser beam right with your hand, just kind of move your hand back and forth. Now, we need to get the um, movable machines laser targeted to the stationary. Now that is done by this knob here at the top of this uh, laser head. So we just turn that slightly. And well, you can see I'm, I'm turning towards the camera counterclockwise. So, so I'm going the wrong direction. So let me turn that back up. Like so. Get a hair more. All right, so now we're basically identical from one to the other, but we still have an angle difference between the heads. So in other words, they're, they're slightly skewed from one another, and I can clearly tell this is not in line with this, so I'm gonna go ahead and loosen this up, the stationary machine, loosen up this tightening knob, and just move it slightly like that. You can see down here, right, where I'm now basically at a zero degree difference almost, 0.1 degree difference from uh, the stationary to the movable lasers. So I wanna make sure these are snugged, just like that. And so now I'm good to go. Well, not really. I moved it enough to where it's slightly off. So let me do a slight adjustment there. So you got to be careful when you're torquing these things down that you don't move the entire bracket like I just did. Just like that. Okay, so now that's much better. Uh, we're back to where we're at. We're good on our rotation angle, so I'm going to go ahead and hit done. Actually, I need to move my lasers, it looks like, up here to the 12 o'clock position. Yep, now, there we go, that, now it's loosening that front bolt, that's what was wrong. Right, so now I need to come to this front corner of the motor and go ahead and loosen that up and hit record loose. And then you watch that bolt, it'll tighten back down. So I tighten this back down and hit record tightened. Now it's going to flip me all the way around to this back corner, right, you'll see that loosen up. Let me go ahead and loosen that up and hit record loose. You'll see it tighten back down. So I'm going to tighten that back down. Hit record tightened. Now to the front foot. Loosen that up. Hit record loose. Tighten that back down. Hit record tightened. And now it's going to take us to the far back corner. I'm going to go ahead and loosen that one up. Hit record loose. Tighten it back down and hit record tighten. Right, so there we go. So we have no deviations, we have no soft foot. Right, as long as you're within two thousandths of an inch, uh, you're not gonna have to correct anything. If any one of these feet was over a two thousandths of an inch deviation, we would have to shim that, whatever shim thickness it told us to put in there, we would put that in there and then basically remeasure. right? We don't have to do that, so I'm gonna go ahead and hit done down here. Now that is, we could resume that. You're like, oh, well, I forgot something, right? So you could actually go back in here and do something if you needed to. You could remeasure it. Um, but we're going to say done. 
and it's still sitting right there until we close the app. Now it's also right here, right? This is the report we just created. So we called that demo rig 11, right? So uh, what I'm gonna do when I come to the alignment app, I'm gonna name my alignment report the exact same name. That way I can tie those two together. So if I wanna export this report, right up here at the top of the screen, you'll see the little uh, box with the arrow. That's uh, iOS's export or do something with it. I could come here and launch my Outlook email and I could email that to myself or email that to the customer, right? That's uh, um, very easy on iOS and Android as well. The difference between the two, and I'll talk to you again about this on the alignment video, is that iOS, I can come up here and hit select, right? And I can take and touch all eight of these reports, highlight them, and do the exact same thing. I can export all eight of these reports at one time via email, right? I'm not gonna do that, I'm gonna cancel it, but I could go to Outlook and send those reports to, uh, to my customer or to myself. So I'm gonna go ahead and come back out of there. That is one feature that iOS uh, outperforms Android on, right? Android, you have to select each report individually and export them email them basically one at a time. Or I guess if you had a connection, you could put them on a memory stick. So uh, that reports here, that reports here. When we close the app, this will go away, but the report is still down here. So I'm gonna go ahead and close this. And my lights on my lasers, the blue connection light, right, is disconnected now. The minute you close the app, um, it disconnects the laser unit. So now when I come to shaft alignment app, now I've already had these lasers connected to this uh, app. So it's gonna pick them up and they're gonna turn on. So I'm gonna go ahead and come to shaft alignment. All right, so when we launch the app, right, across the top we have all the function buttons. And down here on the bottom we've got the reports that I've created, the alignment jobs that I've done and created with this particular app and this TKSA71 alignment tool, right? So uh, we've got all of the reports down here at the bottom. Uh, across the, uh, the function buttons across the top here, we've got new alignment, settings, machine library, help, and news, right? New alignment we'll get to here in a second. Settings we'll get to here in a second. Machinery library is made up of nothing more than all of the machine IDs from these reports, right? So if I click on this particular report right here, let's try, there we go. And this machinery ID, demo rig January 11th, that name is actually stored up here in the machinery library. Right, so if we come down here, there it is, demo rig January 11th. So I can click on that, showing you one report, and here's basically the machinery information that I input into that report. Right, so you can start a new alignment from here, but it's really only saving you a couple steps because the laser heads, you're gonna have to re-put this dimension in, right? The dimension for this laser head to the center of the coupling, this laser head to the center of this coupling, and the distance from this laser head to the front bolt of the, of the motor, right? The spacing between bolt holes, that's gonna stay the same. Uh, but all of these dimensions, three out of the four dimensions, you're probably gonna have to re-input in unless you put them exactly in the exact same spot on both shafts. So uh, the only thing that's gonna save you is one dimension there, uh, a picture, of course, you won't have to take another picture because the picture's already loaded in there. Also tolerance ranges, right? So the tolerance ranges are gonna be loaded in there as well. And shims versus adjustable chocks, that basic information. So it doesn't save you a lot of time, but you can start a new alignment from this page. So I'm gonna get out of that. So that's what that machinery library is. Help, this is a tutorial section. There's instructions in there, the instruction booklet for the TKSA 71, the quick start guide. Uh, website support, and then some instructional videos on some of the basic stuff that I'm showing you already in this video also are housed here. Down here is news. When SKF has an update or they've got something new for this particular alignment tool or this app, this same app is used for the TKSA 51. You can see here the TKSA 51. This is a news article about vertical shaft alignment. That's a new function for the TKSA 51. So there is now an app a vertical shaft app for TKSA 51, and that's what this is telling you. This is information, and SKF will push information out to you in that news category. So now I'm gonna go into settings. You'll see in settings, you're not gonna have anything, right? When you first download this app, there's not gonna be company, there's not gonna be an operator, there's not gonna be a logo, right? Uh, so you can touch that and input your company name, touch this line, input your operator name. As far as the logo, I took a photo right, of the uh, SKF logo and uploaded that. So when you click on this initially, it's gonna say choose a photo or take a photo. So you could take the, the tablet, take a photo, or you could uh, download 
from your website or what have you an image of your logo and then put that in here. So the SKIF logo is there as well. Now angular error I'm going to leave set to mils versus a gap on the coupling you know at, at operating speed and temperature. I'm going to leave the angular error at mils. Uh, sensor values always display. If you turn this on as you're doing an alignment on the screen are going to be the values of the laser heads. You're going to see their degrees of displacement, all that kind of information. You're going to see that displayed on the screen all the time. I've got it currently shut off. Uh, measuring options, let me turn this fixed angle off here. Measuring options, enable automatic measuring, right? If you turn on automatic measuring like that, when you get to your um, three readings, right? When you get to your first place to take your first reading, when you stop moving the laser heads, it's going to count down three, two, one, and take your reading for you. That's what automatic measuring is, right? So I'm going to turn that off. Use fixed angles. If we turn that on, it's going to push us into a 9, 12, 3 traditional alignment, right? So it actually will show you on the screen use fixed angles versus free, uh, free movement of the, of the measuring heads. Uh, extended filter length. Uh, we talked a little bit about this uh, earlier in the video, but if you turn this on, right, if you've got excessive vibration, excessive winds, you can turn extended filter length on and it will take a reading over a two second period all the way up to a 20 second period. It'll take that measurement over that length of time and filter out the vibration, filter out the wind disturbance, what have you. I don't have any of that here, so I'm going to turn that back off. Hardware, none selected yet, right? So you don't see any here. There's none selected. I'm going to show you that here in a second. Unit of measure is imperial, right? You can also switch that to metric if you would prefer the metric system. We're in the United States, so we're going to go with the imperial. I'm going to put that back out here. And then down here, uh, imperial units, mils or thousands, right? Basically the same thing, so I'm going to leave that on thousands. So now I'm going to come back over here to select hardware on the tablet. And there are my two laser heads, right? So the 28 and 29, the movable, right, is the 29. The stationary is the 28. So I'm going to say done. And we are ready to go. That's everything in settings here. So we're going to go ahead and say new alignment. I'm going to call this the same uh, report name that I called that soft foot. So demo space rig and 11 right QR code I don't have a QR code I could scan that if I want I'm not going to take another photo I showed you how to do that right so tolerances click on here uh, I'm going to say this motor is 1800 rpm so I'm going to leave it on the 1 to 2000 setting here uh, but you can clearly see 2000 to 3 3 to 4 4 to 5 5 to 6 right as you go up in speed your uh, offset and angular error tolerances go down, right? So as you're five to 6,000 RPMs, your tolerances are much tighter than you are at 1,000 to 2,000 or you know under 1,000 RPMs, right? So uh, you could also put in here custom tolerances. If your equipment manufacturer has custom tolerances they want on that piece of equipment, you could actually input those as well. I'm gonna leave this at 1,000 to 2,000 RPMs. Uh, come up here, I'm gonna leave shims versus adjustable chocks. Everyone knows what shims are. Here's shims. And then these are adjustable chocks. Right? These are SKF Vibricon adjustable chocks. These go under the feet of the pump. These go under the feet of the motor. And you can adjust these chocks up or down right, to um, align your pieces of equipment. Very cool alignment devices. A bunch of different materials, right? This one is black sock. <laughs> this one is black oxide coated, drop the washer off the top of it. This one is stainless steel. So there are a bunch of different variations and a bunch of different sizes. So those are what adjustable chocks are. Target values, again, this is another setting that if your machinery OEM had specific target values or gaps for the coupling, right? At uh, thermal growth expansion target values, uh, target values at the feet and hot and cold measurements. This is where you would input all those specific OEM specified typically uh, recommendations or tolerances. So I'm, I don't have any of that, so I'm gonna come back out of here and say done. Now, before we dive into this, let me come back to the main menu. We'll resume this here in a second, right? Uh, this particular piece of equipment, uh, let me see where I actually added the note. Here we go. Here's a report. 
where in the notes, I've actually added the shims that it took to get this thing aligned. So there is a notes section here uh, in the report that you can go in there and put all the details of that, right? You can, you can put in the details of what shims were required in the front feet, what shims were required in the rear feet, you know, detailed notes on exactly what you did. So I know that this particular demo rig takes 45,000 to the front and 22,000 in the rear, right? So you can clearly see how misaligned this coupling is right now. Uh, and as you rotate it around, it really doesn't change, right? It's, it just misaligns and it's kind of torque and bound because of the distance between the two. I know that this unit requires 45 thousandths in the front, 22 thousandths shims in the rear based off of a report I've done on this before. So if I don't pre-shim this, right, it's going to basically walk me through three measurements, right? Three measurements, three adjustments, and then it will be aligned. But I know that it takes 45 in the front and it takes 22 in the rear, so I'm gonna pre-shim this before I even get to the alignment. So I'm gonna put 40 thousandths under each front foot, possibly. Just that over here. And I'm gonna put uh, 20 thousandths under each rear foot just to start so much closer than where I'm at right now without any shims. So I'm gonna snug those back up, rotate this around a little bit, just to allow any tension in that coupling to kind of work itself out. Make sure those are snug down again. All right, now let me come back out, the, out of this, back to the report that we already started. So I'm gonna go ahead and resume this report. So now you can see on the screen that it's telling me to move, right? Now, this is the orientation, right? The view we see here on the screen is actually from this side of the motor over here, right? So we can freely rotate this around any direction, top-down view, whatever, right? We can freely rotate this around. Now, I'm clearly standing on this side of the motor. So it's telling me, hey, you need to move your lasers towards this other camera, right? Um, but you'll notice I could also, down here, as long as this button is blue, I could record my first reading right here. The TKSA 71 allows you to start in any position, right? It's going to try to direct you to do the traditional 9, 12, 3 alignment, 180 degree alignment. And that's actually what I'm going to do here. But I'm going to show you on the screen how little you have to move these laser units, right? 40 degrees is all you need to, to move this TKSA 71 to get an accurate alignment. I'm going to go through the entire 180 or close to that. But I want you to watch on the screen here, right? I could clearly right now record my first reading. Right, it's clearly blue, and I could record my first reading right here. I'm actually going to move it over here. Right, and now you'll notice that button turn green. Let me bring that back up here. Right, the button is blue right now, the record first button. Also, remember back in settings when we talked about automatic readings. If I had selected automatic readings and turned that on, when I got this over, when I move these laser heads over, if you watch this button as I move these over, and that button turns green right there, Right? and I stopped moving these laser heads, it would count down three, two, one, and it would automatically take the recording for me. Right now, I have to come over here and push the button, record first. Right? So now it's saying, okay, if we look at this arrow, right, you can move this around. It's saying, okay, move those heads back up. So I wanna show you how little movement you actually have to move. So watch the red button here. Right? I clearly can't take my second reading right now. But if I move this up to this point right here, right now I clearly could take my second reading. I'm gonna move it up here to 12 o'clock, right, to just show you the versatility of this unit, right? So there's my green record second. I'm gonna go ahead and record my second reading. Now, if we move this arrow around here, right, you can tell that it's saying, okay, we need to move these again. So watch the button again as I move this from here. Right there, I could record my third reading in this, that little bit of a movement. I'm gonna go ahead and come around here to three o'clock. Here's my green. I'm gonna go ahead and record hit record third. All right, so now uh, this is where we're at. We're clearly off. Our vertical angle is actually within tolerance, but everything else, our vertical offset, horizontal offset, and horizontal angle are all off. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and hit adjust and see what it tells me to do. So we can move this machine around like this to see. All right, so it's telling me to put three thousandths in the front feet and one and a half thousandths in the back feet. Right? I've got quite, of an, quite an assortment of uh, shims over here. 
but I don't have a three thousandths and I don't have a one and a half. I've got twos, I've got fives, I've got eights, I've got tens. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and put, uh, I'm going to put five in the front. I could put four in the front and see what it would do. Um, but I know that last time, um, if I put four in the front, it would probably make me do this a third time. But for speed of this video, I'm only going to put, uh, I'll put uh, five in the front and I'm going to put two in the rear to end up somewhere close to where I need to be. So I'm going to take the two and put it underneath the 20, slide that back into place. And I'm just going to add the 5 to the 40 that I've already stuck there before. Slide that into place, and I'm going to go ahead and snug that up. Not moving my lasers, right? Leaving those in place. And I'm going to say shimming is done. And it's going to say, okay, now we've got to move this thing horizontally. So luckily this thing has little jack bolts, right? If not, I'd be sitting here with a little mallet, a little rubber mallet, tapping this thing. So I clearly need to go towards that camera two and a half and one and a half thousandths. Now, now look, when I basically loosen the bolts, right, this is how sensitive this thing is, it's now in tolerance, right? So I'm guessing these little jack bolts had this thing bound a little bit, right? We've got green checks. We could sit here and, and chase our tails all night long trying to get these perfect. I'm going to go ahead and snug these bolts back down and see if that won't allow me to keep my green checks. Yes, it does. All right, so we're well within tolerances. Now we could sit here and try to push that motor over two thousandths, two and a half thousandths. Uh, but then inevitably you're gonna have to move it back. It's uh, very, very um, sensitive. So I'm gonna say done because I've got my green arrows, right? I'm gonna say adjustment done. Now we're gonna remeasure. So I'm gonna go ahead and record my first reading right where these laser units are at right now. Now you can, let me move this around here, and it's showing, right, we've got to rotate these things up. And again, I just move them a small distance, and it'll turn blue just like that, right? I'm going to bring it back up to 12. When that button turns green, remember blue or green, either one, you can take the reading. So now I'm going to come back around to 3, but if I move it to about here, there it is. There's our blue button. So I'm going to move it around to 9 and record my third reading. And look at that, green arrows, that's a beautiful thing, right? So that's what we want, we want green arrows. We're within all of the tolerances set in our tolerance tables, and those tolerance tables are very conservative, right? So this is, this is a completely aligned unit. So at this point in time, you could readjust, you could remeasure, right? But there's really no need to do that. I'm going to go ahead and say alignment done. And now uh, I can come here or I can come here. So I'm going to come back into this report, I'm going to tap the notes section, right, and I'm going to come in here and tap that notes section and put in the, just put a note in there that, again, it took uh, 20, 22 thousandths in the rear, 0 0.022 inches, or thousandths should I say, rear. It hit return and it took 45 in the front. So point, let's switch back to numbers, point zero four five front shims. That way, the next person that comes to align this knows what was done. And you know, years later, if you come to realign this, or well, let me back that out of there. Uh, when you come to realign this particular piece of equipment, you can see what was done in the past, right? You can also put a note in here that you pre-shimmed it, right? I could have put a note in here that said I pre-shimmed the front feet to 40 thousandths and I pre-shimmed the rear feet to 20 thousandths, right? You can put all those types of notes in here to help the next person or help yourself in a couple years when you go to realign this thing. So I'm going to come back to the report and I'm going to come back to main menu. Now we could click right back in here and come right back into the report, right? We could remeasure, we could readjust if we wanted to, uh, but we don't need to. So I'm going to say alignment done, come back out of here. Just like the um, Softwood app, if I come up here and hit select 
and select this report, this report, this report, this report, right? I can export every one of these reports via email, email them to myself, email them to my customer. So it's very easy to do. And that's, uh, I'm going to go ahead and hit cancel on that. Um, it's very easy to do on iOS. It's also easy to do on Android. You just have to do each individual report uh, separately. So that is the alignment. I hope you found the video useful. Again, apologize for the length of time, but we tried to answer as many questions and give you as much detailed information on this alignment tool as we possibly could. If we didn't answer all your questions, at the end of this video will be some contact information. So please contact us and we'll answer your questions. But most importantly, thank you for your business.